right guys, if you are new to this channel, I am micro ranching for profit on 30 acres with sheep and Dorper sheep specifically as my primary enterprise. I came into this with no experience in agriculture and I started in 2020 after seeing sort of our food system collapse and realizing that I was in the midst of a resource that I could utilize to feed at least my family. Being from a business background, I also saw the potential for profit in what I was doing, more specifically in grass-based agriculture. And so I set a goal to, by 2027, be net profiting $1,000 per acre on 30 acres. And I chose sheep to do it for a lot of different reasons that I talk about on this channel. And while a lot of people will come and they'll say, you could do 10 times more than that with chickens, you could do 10 times more than that with pork, my goal is to take grass and convert it into a marketable finished product with no more than 10 or 15% feed inputs on an annual basis. We're at a time and place in agriculture where it is a make or break moment. In fact, the average age of the American farmer is 54 years old, with one third being over 64. That means within the next 15 years, unless we get young people interested and able to get into agriculture and make it a profitable, pleasurable experience, we are going to lose one third of our food producing population. When I jumped into farming, I was told flat out that I never would make money at it. So there were five things that I put in place at the onset. Number one, I chose a highly specialized primary enterprise. Number two, I am leasing land instead of buying it. Number three, I am managing my natural resources for minimal inputs. Number four, I am bypassing the commodity markets by creating my own website to market my farm products direct to consumer. And number five, I am diversifying income streams to create an income hedge against loss or bad years on the farm. If you are interested in raising sheep yourself, please click on the link down below for a free ebook, The 13 Things You Need to Raise Sheep. On my farm, I focus really intensely on what is called intensive rotational grazing. During the growing season, in fact, which kicks in here about mid-March in Northeast Texas, I move my animals every 24 to 48 hours. And in short, this allows me to basically generate twice the amount of grass that I would be able to should I simply leave my animals in a pasture for continuous grazing. And I use electric fencing to do this. My primary source of income right now, as far as the farm goes, is just selling the lambs. What makes my stock a little bit more unique is the fact that they are full blood Dorper sheep. This is a hair breed. It's in high demand because number one, it is low maintenance. They do not require shearing. They shed their coats annually and it removes that financial liability of having to shear your sheep. And number two, they are incredibly meaty animals, which meat is the primary product off of them. I typically lamb in the first week of March, but I timed it to be just a little bit earlier this year because in previous years, it's been way too much for me to handle both kicking off my intensive rotational grazing system as well as lambing. So I moved it up about three weeks. Now that said, I keep the ram on property all year round and he broke out of confinement in about July and he bred about five ewes out of season. Those particular lambs were born during freezing cold. Most of them did great, but I did lose some to just the difficulties that surrounded it this season. In fact, I made a video, one back about five losses that I've had over this winter. When I put that video out, I had someone email me with so many encouraging words and they said, I think I wanna get into doing something like this, but I just don't know if I can handle you know, the level of loss or how that feels. And I, in that moment, I was kind of going through all of it and it was hitting me head on. And I was like, you know what? You're probably right. It feels really, really horrible. And you do get a front row seat at both life and death when you're doing this. And that front row seat at death feels absolutely terrible. But on the reverse side, that front row seat at life is such an incredible joy that is an equal measure to that grief that comes with the loss. You can't really have one without the other. If I didn't have the ability to feel or experience such a deep level of grief, there's also a chance I may not be able to appreciate just the heights of joy that also comes with this work. So there's this sense in which grief adds a greater dimension to joy. 